Hello everyone. Today we will be breaking down this amazing image over here. So um, yeah, before we get into it, I would like to show you some of the images that were used in the making of this particular photo. And I promise you no doves were harmed in the making of this image. So, um, yeah, let's get right into it. Okay, so one of the images that were used is this one right here. This is me right here, and this is my friend Amanda helping me with the light. Uh, as you can see, we have these balloons on the ground, which um, somehow eventually will make it into this um, image over here. Uh, another picture we have is, is, is another picture of me setting down the balloons. And um, take note, we have my assistant, uh, my assistant over here uh, with the light. Uh, there's a reason why she keeps holding this light in this position. I will explain that later. Um, then finally we have Chi Chi over here, friend of mine, uh, as the model. As you can see, she's sitting on here on this too. Um, all right, um, we can get right into it now. So as usual, I will turn off all the layers, then we can build up the image together. Um, so to begin with, I will start with this background image that you see here. Um, I always take a blank picture of the background or my environment um, if I plan to compose it, it later with, with, with other images. It always helps to have something neutral that you can easily just mask over. Um, yeah, so as you can see, we had a background image. I hope I can bring these up in the order that we need them. So I will start with the image of the model. As you can see, she looks like she's floating. But if I, if I turn this back on, you'll see that uh, this is the image of her on the stool. And um, so what I did is mask out the stool. So it was this image against this one of the background. This image against this one on the background uh, using the masking tool uh, technique. Um, I masked out the stool and she was left floating like that. Um, next thing I did was bring in some balloons. So these are the balloons that you see here, I think. Yes, these are the balloons that we brought out. It was um, using the masking technique. I masked out the rest of the environment and then put them where this two was. I added more balloons and um, the image started to, to come together. Um, let's see here, I did more balloons in the background. Uh, using the masking technique, eventually started to, 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 to remove some of this shadow in the sides here with the levels. I used the curves to remove some of it a little bit. Um, but here, since the image already has all these shadows from the trees, it wasn't that big of a deal to try and clean up uh, some of these shadows, especially here where the lighting assistant was standing. Um, so another thing that helped is that this picture was cropped. If you look at how it looked here, we didn't have to worry too much about the assistant because I cut it somewhere around here and I could have used uh, part of this plain uh, environment to fill up the image in these areas. Um, yeah, we keep moving on. I started to add a little bit of shadow. If we zoom in over here, um, I don't know if you've watched my previous videos, but I really emphasize on um, making the shadows 
um, or adding shadows to your image, especially if there's clearly a certain direction in which the light is coming from. Uh, so you add some shadows here for some depth and uh, to actually show, um, sell the idea of her sitting on the balloons. Uh, I think I added more shadow here on the black balloon. Um, uh, the shadows were added using um, your typical brush. So to select the brush, make sure the color is black. Uh, make sure the layer of the brush is below the layer of the model sitting. You can either do that or you could do it how I did it. Um, this was an amateur move, but I the layer of the shadow is above the layer of the model, so I masked it, which is kind of like giving yourself more work than than you should have put in, you know. So my shadow is above the model, but I masked it in, uh, eh, which worked, but it would have been easier to have these shadow images below the model. Uh, I can show you how that works. I bet if I moved these down here uh, too low, still too low. Uh, okay. I guess I've lost myself, but yeah, that's uh, that's that's how you can do it. Um, I added some curves to generally just uh, light up the image. Uh, yeah, I'll show you how that worked. Um, yeah, just bringing some light into the simple. At this point, I merged all these layers to create one image because I was satisfied with the composition of the balloons and the model. I was satisfied with this part, so I merged it so that I don't have to deal with all these layers. And I started to apply these new adjustment layers to this image here. Um, so I added some uh, a curve to this corner once more, trying to reduce on this hard shadow over here. Uh, I did another levels layer. I can't really see where that affected, but yeah, I don't think much was done. But I know it is somewhere here in the corner. Yeah. Next, I merged these layers again, and I had to uh, put this uh, image through camera roll. I'll quickly open that. I realize in the last breakdowns I skipped it and some of you might have not understood what I meant. So this is the camera roll. Um, you could make some adjustments here very similar to Lightroom for those of you who've used Lightroom. So it's almost like an inbuilt Lightroom within Photoshop if I could put it that way. Uh, so this was the full image as you can see before it was cropped and um, this was me compositing some of the parts. Um, so I added uh, a little bit of a green tint. I added um, a little bit of contrast, played around with the exposure, played around with the shadows. In fact, I could, I could move some of these things around. I just want to save. So these are the many different ways I could have um, played around with the image. As you can see, I could have made it much warmer. I could have made it cold and blue. Um, yeah, I really suggest you experiment with um, Camera Raw. I usually use it for some of my color grading, especially at the end of the, the compositing and after I've done a few curves and color adjustments with the other tools. Um, okay, I will cancel that. Um, Moving on, we come to the interesting part, the doves. So the doves is basically mostly made up of this one image that I downloaded online. Um, I got this image, crop, uh, I don't know, but I, yeah, I think it was already a PNG when I downloaded it, so I didn't really have to do much cleanup. And um, what I started to do now was that for this particular one, I targeted her eyes and the direction they were looking because um, I really wanted it to look real like she was really looking at something. 
Um, another thing to pay particular attention to is how sharp and in focus this dove is compared to her. So it's the dove is just as sharp as she is, or at least relatively cl close to 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 us to her sharpness and her depth of field, which means that it really sells the idea that it was very close to her. As you will see with the other doves, the depth of field kind of changes and some of them are not as sharp as the other ones. So to sell it and uh, make it more interesting, I added this other dove at the back here. Basically, it's the same dove. I tilted it and rotated it. Uh, I can show you an example of what I mean. So for example, this is our main dove here. I will make I will make a duplicate of this dav. I'll make a copy of this dav. Yes, so. No, why are you so slow? Okay, yeah. So I have made a copy of this dav. You can't see me move it right now, but I will drag it. So this is the dav. And what I did was I decided to to move it to to the back and moving it to the back in this case meant um to 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 make it a little bit more blur and after making it blur i uh made sure i masked it out a little bit at that point and um yeah even the lighting you know like um, I assumed it was in a space where a little bit of the light was 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 hitting it, so that's how we 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 get some of that um, like lighting. Moving on, I started to add more of this dab. So this particular one is a different PNG of 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 of, of the dab. Um, no, actually, similar one, just cut out the legs. Moving on, I added the same dove, but this one was much more blur because it was very, very close to, 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 to the camera. Just to make it interesting, I was drawing these doves around. This one here is like typically what I do. I like to do very weird things that make you wonder what happened. Uh, yeah, so I put this one really close to the to the to, to the to the camera just to create some sort of confusion like these doves were losing the minds and just flying um, across the scene more doves and finally the logo so yeah, basically um, This was a while back when I did this um, For those of you who are already designers, you can tell like there's a few things like how I added these shadows that could have been done better. Uh, I could have put these shadows below the layer of the girl and rather than putting them on top and masking them. But then again, for the beginners, it just shows you how limitless or how there's uh, a million ways you can do the same exact thing or can achieve the same exact thing but in in different ways here in in Photoshop and in other editing softwares everybody has their technique everybody has a way in which they do things and at this point this is how I decided to do this um, yeah other than that I hope you enjoyed this picture um, and this sorry this breakdown and um, I hope you don't forget to subscribe if you're not already subscribed leave me a comment if you've got something to say um, you know we never stop learning and um, yeah for those of you who would like to see um, a tutorial I could show you how I edit these pictures from scratch but you will have to let me know guys because um, I want to make sure somebody out there is interested. 
Um, yeah, don't forget to leave me a like and you can find me on Instagram at Lucas Focus, on Facebook, uh, that's uh, Focus Photography. And uh, yeah, thank you very much and see you next time.